Alright guys, welcome to the brand new Football Manager 2021 Hearts Career Mode. We've been waiting a long time on this one. Too long, to be honest. It's almost been as long waiting on this as we have COVID to disappear. And just like COVID, we're looking to do a bit of social distancing here in our first season. And we want a social distance far away as possible from these other shitey teams in the Championship. Yes guys, we are in the Championship. It's not fair. I mean, a team like Hearts shouldn't be here. We should be in the Premiership playing with the big boys. Even though Celtic like to play with little boys, we want to play with the big boys. But to do that, we're going to have to get through a Scottish Championship campaign. Now, this just ain't any Scottish Championship campaign. It is a 75% distance campaign. So I believe there's only 27 games to play, which in reality shouldn't change anything. We should still win the league relatively easy and if we don't win the league easy then i will be there'll be questions asked and budge will be whipping my ass i'll be kicked out the door we have to win the league guys nothing else will do here so with that said let's go let's pick hearts and let's get this series underway estimated game speed at five stars that's what i like to see see when you pay a grand for a new gaming computer let's be real man it should be five stars should be five stars from here to the end of the moon i don't know five stars forever but let's go, let's set this up. And what leagues do we need playable? I'm probably going to add quite a few here. Estimated game speeds now at four stars. It's database. I think we'll go with a medium database. And keep in mind, I, I only intend to go hearts in this series. I do not intend to move to any other club or this is a heart save. So therefore, I will only be going hearts. And I think I would like to add a few more leagues, especially the... The UK leagues just to try and get as many players from these leagues as possible. So we'll, we'll add the non-Irish league. We will add the Republic of Irish league. And we will add the Welsh league. Any other leagues that we want to add. Perhaps, what is there? There's Germany, France. I mean, do we, will we really need them? Perhaps we could add them. I mean, I guess we'll add the German league. And will that do us? We've got Spain, Italy. We've got England. Yeah, you know what, I think I'll do this. We'll just add the German League and that'll do this. Because, like I said, they all will be available anyway. It's not like if you don't choose the leagues, you can't have these teams, man. They're all available. And it still gives us three and a half star game speed. That is us, guys. That is all the active leagues there, even though we don't need to do playable. Basically, the, the more leagues you add, it's like the more players you get to choose from. But, I mean, there'll be a shitload of players anyway. So, we don't need to worry too much about that. Advanced options. Uh, use fake players and staff. No, we want the real shit. Do not use real fixtures. Why would you use that? Of course we want the real fixtures. Um, add players to playable teams. Nah. Disable first transfer activity. You know what? We're going to do that because I think we'd like a pretty realistic start to the season. So we're just going to have the, the squad that we started the season with. But let's be real, man. This squad should be good enough to tank this league. I'm not sweating it, guys. If I'm not fearing it. You shouldn't be fearing it either. Prevent the use of in-game editor. I think they'll keep the in-game editor in just in case something needs to be changed. Some game-breaking, I don't know, game-breaking fault that we want to keep or make amends to. Then we'll keep that in there. So here we go. Let's create the manager profile. Everything looks pretty good here. Uh, date of birth is correct. Place of birth, unfortunately, is correct. Uh, coaching qualifications. Apparently, we need to take a Continental A license. Past playing experience, professional footballer, I wish, professional shit talker on YouTube, like, but uh, that's about as much as experience as I've got. Uh, coaching, I mean, it's given us pretty good coaching stats here, so I, I don't know whether we deserve them or not, but we'll, we'll take them for sure. Alright, now we can change our badge. What is the badge that is suggested on Hearts? It is, I guess we'll take that. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. Uh, we could go, maybe go a wee bit lower. What's the lower one? Continental... Continental C license, isn't it? You know what? We'll take this one because I do want to have a bit of a challenge. So Continental C license, yeah, we'll go for that. Should make it harder. Uh, we ain't interested in adding any more managers. That is us good in the hood to get this series started, and then we will go ahead and confirm it and let's go. Breaking news: Heart of Midlovian hire cool. Why we do not know. They've kicked um, Robbie Nielsen out the door and they've brought in this guy that's never won fuck all, countless amount of series he's done on YouTube and he's never won a damn thing. So why have they hired me? I don't know. Maybe Hearts don't like being winners. Maybe they want to be losers, but I'm in. 
I'm here. I'm now a jambo. So we can uh, let's let's work together here and try to bring success to the club. So Hearts have today confirmed the appointment of Jamie Cool. That is me, son of Scotland ninety, as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the twenty nine year old, who has recently spent time in his bedroom doing absolutely fuck all during lockdown. But anyway, <laughs> he is sure to play spent uh, plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Tynecastle Park. Uh, cool has put pen to paper on a two-year deal worth 3.1 grand a whole I wish I was getting 3.1 grand a week the, the amount of things I would do for that money is crazy anyway he replaces the previous manager Robbie Nielsen who now has to go down to the job centre God help Robbie, Robbie Nielsen it's a tough economy I don't know how he's going to get a new job uh, Cool lacks the reputation of a title specialist which given the club's current ambitions creates an intriguing dynamic as they intend to challenge for major honours we do in uh, intend to challenge for major honours can I win those honours though that's what remains to be seen I mean you have to give me a chance anyway here we go and Budge is the chairman I'd like to formally welcome you to Hearts. To get your acquaintance with your new surroundings, you'll receive an inductory welcome pack before going to finalise the vision and objectives we have to proceed with together. Congratulations and welcome aboard. So here we go. We are the manager. Assistant manager is Gordon Forrest. Director of football is fake. Now, I don't know whether we'll get one or not. We could try bringing Craig, uh, Craig Levine back, but I think if I'd done that, like, probably 500 people would unsubscribe so we're not going to do that Craig Levine you can just stay away stay as far away from Tynecastle as possible reputation of hearts is currently two and a half stars media prediction is first I mean not just the media I mean the dumbest person in the world the lowest IQ person in the world would probably predict us to finish first as well there's there's fucking monkeys in a, a, Antarctica predicting us to finish first so it should happen guys you know what I mean it really should club history let's see what have we won you can see we've won the Scottish Premiership on four occasions. The last time we won it, man, Jesus Christ, 1960. That's too long ago. Um, Scottish Cup, we've won that shitload of times. We're sick of winning the Scottish Puck Cup, but we'll take another one. Why not? The Betfred Cup, won that on four occasions. I mean, that's, oh my God, I never realised we haven't won it since 1963. That's mad. That's a long time ago. And uh, Scottish Championship. Unfortunately, we've won that recently because we were in it and we're in it again. So, upcoming season, Scottish Championship, uh, what's this, last season we finished, what, we didn't finish sixth, what's this, oh, but Scottish Cup, we entered at the second round, Betfred Cup, we entered at the group stages, so uh, some some history here for anyone that cares, founded in 1874, Heart of Midlovian, a professional Scottish club currently playing in the Scottish Championship, Heart suffers relegation from the Scottish Premiership last season because they were utter dog shite and will need to adjust to life in the Scottish Championship. The club play their home games at Tynecastle Park and possess excellent training and youth facilities. Why the fuck's my alarm going off at quarter to 11? I don't know, but we'll turn it off right here, right now. Try not to uh, ruin the live stream next time and the video. Anyway, let's continue. The club play their home games at Tynecastle Park and possess excellent training and youth facilities. The club's training ground is Orium. The Hearts Reserves team play at Orium. The club also has good academy coaching and a good youth recruitment network. The club is affectionately known as the Jambos and retain a fierce rivalry with Hibernian, the Hibbies, the shitey team from Edinburgh. Um, er enjoying their greatest era during the 1890s, the Jambos have a history they can be proud of, boasting a total of 18 competition wins, 18 time champions! Yes, let's make it 19 guys, let's do it. Here are just some of their highlights. Hearts won the Scottish top division in 1895, 1897, 1950 and 1960 and finished runner-up 14 times. 14 times, damn it. Have 8 Scottish Cup wins to their name and finished second best 7 further times. Won the Betfred Cup in 95, 1955, 1959, 1960 and 1963. And finished second best 3 further times. Won the Scottish tier in 1980 and 2015. And finished runner-up on 2 occasions. So guys, there you go, man. Jam-packed. We are a club that is... A, we're a force to be reckoned with, right? In Scotland, when people hear the name Hearts, they take note. Anyway, here's the coaching staff. They've compiled a brief overview of the current Hearts squad. And this appears to be our best 11. So the best 11 would be Craig Gordon in Nets, which is a, a no-brainer. Um, Kingsley, left-back, debatable. Centre-back partnership of Haring and Suter. I would say that is the, the best that we have at centre-back. I agree with that. The Rolls-Royce, Michael Smith. What a guy. Definitely have him in at right-back. This guy, future Hall of Famer, man. 
I would happily let him shag my wife if I had one. But anyway, there's Michael Smith in it right back. We've got uh, Ollie Lee and Andy Halliday. How the hell is Andy Halliday play for Hearts? A Rangers reject. I mean, this guy would be an East Sterling reject if he played for them. So how's he getting in the Hearts team? That's what I want to know. I mean, fair play to him. He, he tries and he's committed, but he's not a good footballer. I guess we'll try and get him out as quickly as possible. Uh, on the left, we've got Walker. In the middle, Naismith. On the right, Janelli. And up front, Liam Boyce. I think that's where I want to improve hearts, guys. I think I think our attacking options need to be improved on. And, and Janelli, I don't rate him. I really don't. Here is some transfer obligations. Janelli on loan, Ross Stewart on loan. And at the moment, we've got Colin Doyle out. Jay Sanderson out. Cochrane out. Chris Hamilton out. Connor Smith out. Leroy Makarov out. Shane, Sh Sean Ward out. No idea who that guy is. And Harry Stone out on loan to Spartans. So, a lot of players out on loan at the moment. Club Vision and Budge. So, here we go. Sign players under the age of 22. That is the preferred signing. So, we can break that. It's not as if we need to sign players under the age of 22. But that's what you would prefer. Uh, develop players using the club's youth system. We can do that. I mean, we have a very good youth system. So, we should be able to do that in the baller. Five-year plan. Work with... Uh, well, five-year plan. Hopefully, we're not sacked in the first year. I'm hoping we can last five years. Work within the wage budget. Of course, we'll work within it. No problemo. End of current season. Win a domestic cup is preferred. It's going to be hard, but we'll try. Scottish Championship promotion by win the league required. Yeah, absolutely. Scottish Cup reach a quarter-final minimum required. I'll try my best. I mean, I don't think it's hard, but if you get a tough tie, you know, if you get Rangers or Celtic, then you're pretty much uh, shafted. Betfred Cup, reach the quarter-final minimum, and that is preferred as well. Contract expires, work towards being recognised as the best of the rest. Best of the rest, so basically try and take Aberdeen's place. Uh, work towards being, yeah, so, so basically, yeah, the, the, even by the end of the five-year period, they, they have no ambition of us being, you know, <laughs> league winners. They just think that, the best we're going to do is third place, so not a lot of ambition there for the Ambudge and the, the club, but we'll accept it. We've got news here, uh, emails that we'll deal with at a later date. I don't want to read emails, I'm getting a sore head. Fucking emails, shove the emails up your ass. Finally, please do not hesitate to let me know if you would like any arrangements below to be made. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to Hearts, and everyone at the club hopes that this is the beginning of a long and successful era. Well, I'm hoping it's the beginning of a successful error too. At least it's not the Craig Lafine error, though he's gone. Thank God for that. Arrange an intra-squad friendly to assess the squad when possible. No, I don't want to do that. I don't see the point in that. Schedule a press conference. We will take the press conference, so send an advice report on the backroom staff. We will do that as well, guys. It's always good to let know what the backroom staff's up to, so we'll accept that, and now we need to go ahead and save the game. So there we go. We've taken the hot seat. The hot seat. The seat that everybody wants. The seat that everybody's fighting over. Uh, Hearts players in the last year of contract. So here's a lot of players that we are going to need to either try and retain or try and sell in January or just try and let them die or something like that. Get, get rid of them. There's a lot of players here that I think we're interested in. Uh, Christoph Berrer. I mean, I think in his prime he was a very solid player, but at the moment Christoph Berrer, uh, I'll be honest, probably, we can probably let him go. He's on three and a half grand a week as well, so that's quite a lot of money. Uh, Slamal, I'm happy to let go. One and a half grand a week. I'm not really interested. Stephen Kingsley, I think he's a player that we could try and get here. We will offer contract. We'll do that at a later date. I'm not going to do it right now, but he's definitely someone we want to keep. Same with Michael Smith. Aiden White, um, again, I guess he's a player that would maybe be interested in keeping. Craig Whiten, maybe. Ollie Lee, maybe. Colin Doyle, probably not. Harry Cochrane, definitely as a player that I'll be looking to get signed up for at least a couple of years. Andy Irvine, we want to be getting signed up for a few years. Sandinson, possibly. Sean, I mean, all these guys, I don't really know enough about them, so I'm not going to commit to, you know, offering them a new deal at the moment. But perhaps, perhaps most of them I will want to be keeping. So let's create the tactics, guys. I don't know what tactics are going to go away. And to be honest, I plan on experimenting because... We're going to win this league. We're going to this season. We're going to dominate anyway. So I want to probably try as much different tactics as possible to try and get one that I think is good enough and try and get familiar with it before we go into the the Scottish Premiership and play by the you know the, the big guys, the the teams that matter. So let's see here. Tika Taka, Gen Gen Press instantly win the in high intensity running. You know I'm, I'm very interested in doing this one. I think this one, yeah, I think that could work for us here. 
I think we'll go for that. We'll try that for now. Let's see. Uh, in possession, pass in the space, play of defence, extremely high tempo, fairly, fairly narrow. In transition, take short. Yeah, I kind of like the sound of that, to be honest. We'll go with that. We need a tactic. What we're going to pick? 4-3. I think this one's probably the best. The 4 2 3 one wide. I think we'll go with that. And then we will go ahead and pick the squad here. So, well, I guess, let's see here. Goalkeeper, who have we got? Craig Gordon or Ross Stewart. It's going to be Craig Gordon all day long here. So, Craig Gordon will be in at goals. In terms of left-backs, holy shit, there's quite a lot of options. Uh, you've got Stephen Kingsley, Andy Halliday, Michael Smith, who ain't going to play there. You know what, we'll probably go with Kingsley. I think we'll put in Kingsley for now. Centre-backs are going to be... Suter and Haring. Suter is injured. How long is Suter out for? It's three to six weeks. He should be back for the start of the season, I believe. If not, then I guess we've got our options there, don't we? We've got Craig Halkett as well, who's a, who's a decent centre-back, so let's not forget about him. Right-back is got to be Michael Smith, the one and only, the Rolls-Royce. It'll be Michael Smith coming in at right-back. Uh, Ball-winning midfielder. Hmm, this is tricky here. I mean, we could play Haring in that role. This is definitely possible. Uh, I think we'll go for... Who are we going to go for? Maybe Andy Irvine? Maybe we'll play Andy Irvine in that position in the back. The box-to-box -box midfielder. I guess we'll go with... Andy Halliday? <laughs> Fuck it, I, I don't really want to go with Andy Halliday. What about Ollie Lee? Ollie Lee, I think. But I think Andy Halliday is more of a defensive player, so maybe we'll go with him. It'll keep the shape better. I think we'll go Andy Halliday, even though I don't rate the guy. Uh, advanced playmaker, probably going to be Stevie Naismith for now. I, I just I think Stevie Naismith's too old to play up front on his own. I don't really want to do that to him. I don't think he's got the legs anymore. Unless we get him a legs transplant, I think he's going to be the kind of attacking midfielder where he doesn't have to run about as much. Oh, on the right-hand side, it's, it's, it's not really, the options aren't really there. So I guess we're going to go with Josh Ginelli, who is probably best suited to the right hand side of midfield on the left we will go with jamie walker and up front it's probably got to be liam boyce because the options aren't great it is going to be liam boyce so at the moment guys that's the 11 that i plan on going with obviously things will change you know fitness form but i think that's a pretty good starting 11 for now but let me know down below if you think that's a good starting 11 or would you change things up or, or what would you do guys but to me i think that's that's no bad We'll, we'll worry me about the bench and stuff like that as we uh, we get closer to it. So here we go with the season's uh, competitions. The club is expecting competing in free. Yeah, we've done all this. I don't know why it's asking us to do all this. We've, we've already discussed this. Why are, you, why are you breaking my balls here over shit that we already know? Craig Gordon is the uh, the captain. So there you go. We already know this. Good youth facilities. We already know this. So again, I think we can go ahead and accept all this. It's stuff that we know. And stuff that we don't really need to, to worry about. Responsibilities, we'll worry about that at a later date. I think we've already got all that sorted. There is the team report. We've already done the tactics. The competitions, we're not in anything at the moment. The schedule, what have we got in terms of schedules? So we do have a couple of friendlies set up. And then we have a, a Cadell testimony. So, we'll, and then we've got Airdrie, huh, my hometown. And Betfred Cup, we've been drawn against. Who have we been drawn against? We've been drawn against Elgin City, Inverness, Cali Thistle, Montrose. And then for some reason, there's quite a big layoff between the the fourth game in the group against Rafe. I don't know why that is. If anyone knows why that is, let me know down below. That's a bit strange how there's like, <laughs> you've got three Betfred Cup games in a row, but then you've got like five games off between the next one. I don't really understand that. Um, scouting, we've already turned the transfer window off, so we won't be scouting anybody in at the moment. Uh, there's club info, you can see the kits, nice kits, not a big fan of the third kit, but the home and away are nice. Um, we've got basically shit that you've already seen, you don't really need to see general anything happening here. Not a lot, finances are okay, we will be trying to work on the finances as much as possible. Nielsen's already left hearts, it's a sad day, but hey... Nielsen out, but they've got me in, so I guess we've got to look at the got to look at the positives, the club vision. Anything in here we need to see? No, I've already seen all this shit. Finances overall, uh, overall balance is one point nine million, so let's call it two. It's close enough to two. 
We've no transfer budget, so we're skint. We know that. But we're, we've no money. We're peanuts. We don't even have peanuts. We're fucking nothing. We've imaginary peanuts. Invisible peanuts. We've nothing. Uh, wage budget, £63,613. Scouting budget, 70000 So, But we're currently spending 62000 one hundred and thirteen. So we've let we've got we've got about fifteen hundred pound on wage budget if we try and bring someone in on January. Jesus Christ, we don't have a lot of money. Income this month, nothing. Expenditure this month, seven thousand one hundred and eighty-seven. I mean, see when you're a Scottish club, I mean, the hardest part probably isn't getting wins on the board. It's getting money in the bank. So we'll need to try and do that as much as possible. Uh, what else have we got here? All right, so we're gonna have a quick run through of our squad. We've already covered most of it, but. I've noticed we've only got two goalkeepers, Gordon and Ross Stewart, who is currently on loan. So, you know, maybe we need to bring someone in or call someone up. Is Maybe we have players on the reserves. I don't know. Where the hell is Slamal and Colin Doyle? They must be in the reserves. So we'll, we'll call them up, I guess. Um, Centre-backs have got Popskew, Halkett, Suter. Haring can play at centre-back or in midfield. Uh, Right-back, you've got Jamie Brandon and Michael Smith. Left-back, you've got White and Halliday, Kingsley. Then it's Damore. Freire, Andy Irvine, Naismith, Ollie Lee, Janelli, Lewis Moore, Jimmy Walker, Jordan Roberts, Craig Whiten, Ewan Henderson, and then um, Liam Boyce. So it's not the best squad ever, but it's a, it's a competent squad, and it's certainly good enough to win the Scottish Championship. Now, speaking of Scottish Championship, let's have a quick look and see who our biggest uh, rivals are then. So let's have a look at the squads that they have here, senior squads, and uh, why we're checking schedule. Jesus Christ. We might have a look at the players. Yes, that's more like it. So, Aloha Athletic, uh, not a big squad at all. Pretty small. We'll, we'll check in terms of value. Highest rated player, 26.5k rated Scott Taggart. Um, I can't imagine Aloha Athletic are going to cause as many problems, I think. Well, they're, at the moment, they're currently first in the league. So, they're doing well based on alphabetical order. But I'm pretty sure once there's some games played, they'll, they'll start plummeting down the table. Um, let's have a look at our Broth. They've got a slightly bigger squad than Aloha. Uh, 66k. In 68, actually. I'm going blind. Miko Furtanen. Who's he? He actually, he's on loan for Aberdeen. I know this guy. Not personally, but I know him. I've seen him in my Master League. Yeah, he's valued at 68k, and he's on loan for Aberdeen, so he must be a half-decent player. But again, I don't see our Arbroath causing as many issues. The team simply isn't good enough. Up um, next, we have Air United. Um, Dario Sanetta, former Hearts man, 62k rated. Uh, we've got Hunter K rated guy on loan in Nets, Cincinnati. Uh, Air definitely look a lot better than the other two teams. But again, these squads aren't massive, so these teams are going to struggle if they get injuries, no doubt about it, but they are going to be in trouble. Now, Dundee, probably the only team I think that could challenge us. I expect us to comfortably beat Dundee, but if anyone was to beat us in the league, it would probably be Dundee here. They've got some noticeable players. They've got Cammy Kerr, they've got Charlie, Adam, Jesus Christ, they've got another former Hearts man, Jordan McGee. Who else have they got? Loads of shite, man. Look at that. Sean Byrne, they've got him as well. Osman So, another former Hearts man. Assuming it's the same guy, unless there's two Osman So's with the same name. Uh, Danny Mullen as well. I believe he's a former St Mirren player. Don't quote me on that, but I think I'm right. So, I mean, this is a, this is a solid Dundee team, and I, I expect them to finish second, man. I expect Dundee to do, have a good season, but hopefully not as good as us. Up next, you've done Fairman, another team that's half decent. They will be up competing towards the you know the top end of the table. Um, who's next? Got Greenick Morton, a very big squad. It looks like their squad's even bigger than ours. But have they got any good players? By the looks of the value, <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Um, it. Seems to be they're going for quantity over quality at Greenick Morton. Shout out to Chris Morton, by the way. Uh, Hearts, obviously we know us. Inverness used to be a Scottish Premiership team. You look at their squad now, and it's. It's kind of sad. They've kind of depleted. It's kind of they've got that shitty championship kind of quality about it. We've got Queen of the South again, another team that is just in the championship. I can't really see them doing anything. They'll be probably down towards the bottom of the table trying to survive relegation. Then you've got Rafe Rovers who are actually doing pretty good in real life. Who's this guy on loan? Lars Lokasic. He is 110k in value. He's on loan for Livingston. He seems to be a decent player. He actually seems to be. Hold on here, would Livingston not want this guy at their club? He seems too good to be on loan. 110k and Livingston are loaning him out to Rafe. That doesn't really make much sense. Um, and then we're back to Aloha Athletic, guys. So there's the, there's the teams. I don't really 
I don't really rate them. I think Dundee are probably the only team that can challenge us. Maybe Dunfermline, but apart from that, we should have far too much for the teams in this division. So here's the squad dynamics induction, and it basically kind of shows you the kind of leadership levels at the club. So at the top, we have Craig Gordon, Stevie Naismith, and Jamie Walker. These are considered like the gods at heart. So these are the three guys that you don't talk shit to. These three are like the locker uh, locker room leaders. And if you don't play well, these three hopefully will kick your arse at half time, or else I'll do it for them. Uh, then after that, we have highly influential players that are John Suter, Michael Smith, and Liam Boyce. I think Michael Smith, he's the, he's the Rolls Royce, he should be in the, the top category, but I guess he can be in the influential players for now. Then we've got influential players, Andy Halliday, Stephen Kingsley, Craig Halkett, Peter Haring, Ollie Lee, Josh Janelli, Ross Stewart and Aidan White. And then everyone else is just down the bottom, everyone else is irrelevant really, so they, they, they don't really matter. Alright, so here we go, the hardest part of our managerial career at the moment. It's not a match, it is not a training session, it's not even a friendly it is the dreaded press conference, so let's get stuck in. There's a few journalists here attending. We've got Mark Gemmell from Sport and Life, Angus Charlesworth from Team Talk, Chris Barnett from Sky Sports, and a bunch of other people that I cannot be bored scrolling down to see. So the likely talking point is your new job. You're enc encouraged to answer questions on this subject. Eight journalists are attending. Eight arseholes will be in the building. Let's attend here and let's see what happens. So here we go. We're sitting down. There's nobody in the seats, what's happening? Empty. Nobody knows who we are. Nobody, nobody's turning up, nobody cares. Look at that, how embarrassing. Couldn't even get a crowd. Okay, let's start this with the first question from Angus Charlesworth, Team Talk. Teamtalk.com Welcome, first of all, Jamie. How do you feel sat here as the new Hearts manager? Outstretched arms. <laughs> no gesture, outstretched arms. Smelly, warm, smell warmly. <laughs> Open arms. Um, well, I don't want to do that. Outstretched arms. I think we'll smile. I don't want to seem like a nonce. Open arms seems like we want a big hug or something. Um, this is an honour, but it also comes with great responsibility. I intend, to, I intend to outwork everyone else to make sure I repay the trust that has been shown to me. Yeah, I think we're going to go with that. Because it is a, it is a, I mean, it's a big honour, but it's also a lot of responsibility and it's a lot of pressure. And I am well aware of that. Um, you stand here today on Field of the Hearts, a big fan of the club, surely this would be a dream come true. It is a dream come true. I have dreamt of this moment for years, I cannot stop smelling. Confidence is a special day for me, but there's work to be done and no time re reminiscing. I have, I have to be careful not to let my love for this club affect my judgement. Um, I think we'll go with... I think we'll go with this one. It's a special day for me, but there's work to be done and no time for reminiscing. Yeah, so we'll go with that, and hopefully that's good. The press conference atmosphere is slightly positive. That's good. At the moment, we're, we're doing a good job. Um, now it's up to Victor Nikakin from Russia, I guess, with a name like that. You've taken the step into football management despite being just 29 years of age. Critics have suggested that you will struggle to command respect in an address that contains players older than you are. What do you say to that? Well, I guess I kind of wanted, and I wanted to get into management before I was old and senile and you know decrepit. So uh, yeah, I thought I think it's time for a change. Management should be a young man's game. I mean, Jesus Christ, when you're 80, you can't even fucking remember your name. Never mind the names of your, your entire 23 man squad. So I reckon, I reckon you should be a, a young man's job management. But we can't actually say that. So what can we say? Um. That's something none of us will know until a few matches have been played. I don't want to say that. That sounds a bit shit. Um, I'm going to say this. I've already met with the... We will... It will shake head, yeah, because I'm not happy with that. I've already met with the players and there aren't any problems so far. They're a professional group. Still slightly positive. What made you take the job? Well, kind of, what, what kind of shit question is that? I might not even answer that. Um, I think their ambition... Because I fucking love the club, mate. Why do, why do you think? Um, we'll go with... We'll go with that. I think their ambition is great and all that shit. Hearts have been on a general downward curve for a little while now. Can you get things moving in the right direction? I certainly fucking hope so. I hope so. The club's itself have been just so much better. Yep, we'll go with that. Uh, yep, yeah, the club deserves more. 
Will you be looking to change the squad very much? At the moment, no. Probably over time, perhaps. But at the moment, no. So we are going to... Yeah, the squad's... This is a good squad, so I'm going to... Sh let's see what we can do. What role can the supporters play in moving the club forward? Well, unfortunately, if, if COVID's hitting the real world in this, then we can't do anything, but... I want the fans to know I take this job very seriously and will do everything in my power to earn their trust. I already know how good this fan base is. I've got to go with this one. I already know how good this fan base is and it'll be a huge part of any success that we have. That sounds like a good answer. Can you talk about the club's potential and where you'd like to take the team? Um, we want to win things. We want to be successful and we've laid out plans how to achieve that. Again, that's, I think that's a good answer. We'll go with that. Thank you, everyone. That's the, that's the press conference uh, over with. How did we get on? Did we do well? Press officer feedback, Cameron McDonald. I think the press conference was just fine. That's okay. Well, I guess that's all right then. Uh, press conference appeared to have the following effects on the list of journalists' relationship with you. Um, okay. So it looks like we've got a positive relationship with Rachel McKay. I wonder if she's hot. Maybe we can bang her. Maybe if she, maybe she's impressed with our, our talking skills and she'll uh, meet us outside. Outside the uh, outside the press conference, hopefully one can dream. Um, cool, met the media. We've already done that. We've met the media. We've already, you know, got in their good books. Hopefully, getting Rachel's bed as well. But uh, for now, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right, so we've got some big news here. John Suter beginning the rehab on his uh, injury, his uh, Achilles tendon. He's expected to boot for um around. He's been out for like four months, but he's expected to be back in about four weeks, which is good. He'll be definitely back for the start of the season. That is happy days. And in terms of contracts, we did manage to get a few players to sign new deals. The first of them was Stephen Kingsley, who we got on a two-year deal. Happy about that. We did have to up his wage slightly, an extra hundred pound a week. But you know what? I think it's money well spent. Up next was Michael Smith, the Rolls Royce again, similar to Kingsley. We upped his wage by hundred pound a week, and he is now at Hearts for another two years, which I'm delighted to announce. And Andy Irvine is also going to be continuing his career, uh, playing career at Hearts. Offered him an extra £50 a week, and he, he's happy to be here for another two years. Now, there were some players that weren't they happy to be here. Um, one of them was Ollie Lee, who I did try and get to sign a new contract, and he rejected it. So, you know what? Fuck Ollie Lee. If he doesn't want to be here, then he can go and play his football elsewhere because I don't want players that don't want to be at the club. And um, probably, guys, that's good date then for the first episode. We have a shitload of time between now and our actual first friendly. 70 days. What the hell am I going to do to keep myself entertained for 70 days? I don't know. But let us know down below, guys, what you think of the squad, what you think of the formation. Is there any things you would like to see? Is there any players you would like us to try and sign for January? Um, I don't think the Stephen Mackay transfer is happening in the game. And obviously, we signed them there in the, the January transfer window. I believe in the game it's not happening. But maybe that's something we could look to make happen. And maybe I will try and get him, you know, to come into the club in January. I mean, at the moment, yeah, like I say, it's definitely not happening. But maybe it could happen, guys. So who knows? Maybe we'll try and get Gary Mackay Stevens in in the first transfer window available. But that's going to do it, guys, for this first episode of the Hearts Career Mode. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I will be back soon, probably tomorrow with episode two, and hopefully the first couple of games of our Hearts career. But until then, guys, it's been Star Scotland 90. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and until next time, peace.